Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to a bit of a review of the 3.0 livestream. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Mr. Salt's stream because the official fucking Genshin Impact channel doesn't actually save vaults. Yeah, no videos found. Uh, if you don't know uh, Mr. Socks, he's a um, a pretty pog Genshin Impact guide maker and a homie. <laughs> you can say hi, Mr. Socks, in the comments if you want. The reason why I want to do this is because there's actually a few things that, if you pay close attention to, have actually been confirmed about the combat system without them actually saying it. And I think they're very interesting, so I want to be I want to be talking about them. But yeah, and I, I mean, I guess might as well also give my thoughts on the patch in general. So they use they use the words polymorphic reactions. Don't bother with that shit. It just makes it sound more complicated than it is. It's basically just that there's two stages to your reactions. There's the main reaction, and the main reaction lets you trigger two sub reactions. And there's two different reactions that have that, so that's a total of four different sub-reactions. Okay, there we go. So we get into combat stuff. Let's go. This is gonna be the run to the video. When it comes to changes of combat, we have to look at the dendro element and reactions related to it. We spoke about the three reactions related to dendro, so those are the three we have, the three main reactions. All right, burning, you already understand it, it's already in the game. So bloom reaction, which is uh, dendro and hydro, and I think they call it catalyze here, yeah. Forget catalyze. They're gonna change to quicken literally like a minute from now. I think this is a problem with the localization team. Pretend the word catalyze is a, is, is quicken, not catalyze. Catalyze is a, is a lie. It doesn't exist. Okay, so first, first is bloom, right? When you dendro and hydro, creates a seed on the ground. That's it. Very, very straightforward. Then the seed itself, uh, if you let it stay there, it'll explode over time. Uh, or if you reach the maximum limit of seeds, which is five, it'll also explode. Basically, if you don't do anything with it, it's gonna explode eventually and deal damage. But you can also do something with it. And the things you can do with it are, uh, you can apply pyro like this, and it triggers burgeon, it makes it explode for more damage. Or you can apply electro and trigger hyper bloom to make it, exp uh, to make it like home into an enemy. Then we have quicken, which is dendro plus electro, puts enemy in a quicken state, and then your Electro and or Dendro attacks will start doing more damage to that enemy. And as you can see, we've got the visual effects of some like green lightning with leaves for a quickened enemies. Right? What I want you to pay attention to is this. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but we actually have some green lightning and some Electro lightning on the enemy at the same time. Some green and some purple. So what that means is you can have Quicken and Electro coexisting on an enemy. Which means that things like the Thunder Soother set should potentially work with Electro. Or it's a kind of, it's confirmation that the Thunder, Thunder Soother uh, set will potentially work with, with Aggravate characters. It won't work with all of them, it'll depend on how much application you have because sure, you can have Electro on them, but then you can also react with the Electro and remove it. So you won't have 100% uptime on it. But point is, you can have it on the enemies and that's relevant. Now, this one's a lot harder to see because we're not used to the Dendro visual effect. But look at what happens when you apply an enemy with Dendro. It has some like little leaves falling off and it makes the leaves like go up outwards and shit. But when you just have Dendro in the enemy, it has some leaves falling off. And as you can see here, right, on this enemy, we also have the leaves slowly falling off. We don't just have the electro lightning and leaves going like upwards. We also have the leaves just slowly falling off, which is the visual effect for enemies being affected with Dendro. So what this means is, yes, you can have Quicken and Electro coexist, but you can also potentially have Quicken and Dendro coexist. In other words, Quicken is going to function like Freeze, just like I predicted, in terms of like how the aura mechanics work. Not how the reaction works, obviously, but how the, how the game treats the auras is gonna function just like just like Freeze, which is, which is cool. It, it means we can figure out a lot of this stuff uh, early on, because we're used to Freeze mechanics. This, I don't think there's anything like that you will have missed, but we're basically getting official footage for Tathnati, right? Which is nice. Uh, his E is kind of like Ganyu's E, more or less. His charge attack is kind of like a single target Ganyu charge attack. And then his burst is like Ningguang's burst. That's kind of a good way to understand how he works. But obviously he does, he's not Cryo or Geo, so he has the access to the Dendro reactions. Uh, from what we understand so far, so yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do a, a, a full character pre-release. I might as well actually talk about uh, what I know about the characters right now and what I expect out of the characters right now. 
So from what we understand, his initial shot applies Dendro, and then one of his four Cluster Blooms will also apply Dendro. In other words, he's applying two instances of Dendro with his charge attacks, which is okay. If each hit applied Dendro, he would have been able to trigger spread a lot, and it would have been like a lot of damage. Again, right, Quicken, me, when, once the enemy is quickened, your Electro and Dendro damage, or Elemental Application, will deal more damage, and it's gonna trigger respectively Aggravate or Spread, and that's the more damage, right? And so, the more spread you can trigger, the more damage you can do. And you don't need to keep reapplying Electro as an aura. You just need to apply Dendro often enough that you don't lose the, the debuff on the enemy. So, he's getting a certain amount of spread. He's getting two spreads per uh, charge salt with the Cluster Blooms. His E, right? It's a taunt, but it also makes his next three charge attacks charge a lot faster. What this means is effectively, you go on the field with him, you use your Q and or your E, then the other one, and then you charge attack three times, and then you swap out. But yeah, so that, that means that effectively, right? He's gonna do E, Q, and then three charge shots, or Q, E, three charge shots. Usually you wanna E, Q on characters because it lets you pre-funnel your energy. But the reason why that's good is because after your E and your Q, you generally wanna swap out. On characters like Tifnati that actually want to stay on the field to do his three charge attacks, you can Q, E because you're still staying on him after your E to get your three charge attacks out. So you don't actually need to EQ, you can QE if you want. Also, from what we understand, when you swap out of him, uh, he keeps like his, his three stacks on his faster uh, his faster charge attacks, which means that you can like do, do EQ, then swap out to do something else and then go back to him and do your charge attacks. Or you can do like one charge attack, then swap out and then back to him and then swap out and then back to him, but right? As a, as a general rule, you'll generally do, just do EQ, three charge attacks, and then swap up. That is gonna take about five to six seconds, maybe seven, I'm not sure. His uh, Q animation, as you can see here, right? is quite long, right? It's, it's a movie, which means that even though his charge attacks are very fast, he'll stay on the field for a deceptively long amount of time because of his burst animation. So do keep that in mind, like he's not gonna just do E then three charge attacks and swap out, you also have to get your burst in. The, the, the way I expect him to work is I expect him to work very well in quick swap teams. So we know that, they don't say it in the in the trailer, but from what we know, uh, his burst has the 12 second cooldown and a 40 cost, uh, which means you can potentially get two bursts per rotation. And I, I expect him to function a lot like just a, a quick swap unit either in spread teams or in hyper bloom teams. I think he's gonna be okay. I don't think he'll be great for two reasons. I mean, number one, I've actually looked at his numbers. I've looked at calcs that use the uh, information from leaks to, to calc like team DPS of his teams. I've looked at a lot of stuff about him and he just looks pretty average. But the other factor that leads me to believe that he is gonna be average is that, I don't know if they say it here, if they say it later, but he will be added to the standard banner in 3.1. Like we, we have confirmation on that. He will be added to the standard banner in 3.1 and they're not gonna put a unit like Ayaka in the standard banner. The whole reason for the standard banner to exist is so that you have a char characters to lose your 50-50 to. And if it's a good character, you're not losing your 50-50, you're winning your 50-50. But Mahoyo wants you to spend money. They're not gonna have you lose your 50-50 to a to a good character. <laughs> Anyways, he's not bad though. Like I I'm saying this, but I don't think he's bad. Uh, I do consider him to be quite a bit better than, for example, Diluc. I think he's actually pretty good for a standard banner character. I think that the main reason why he's gonna look pretty okay is because Dendro teams in general are gonna be very strong and we don't have a lot of Dendro characters yet, which means he's one of the few options we have and the other options we have aren't amazing, which means that he looks very good in comparison. We'll get to why the other options don't look amazing a little bit later. Uh, and then for his burst, I realize I haven't talked about his burst. Uh, it's like Ningguang's burst, it releases six and then instead of it being like Ningguang where like if she has her E, it generates more, it's if they hit, it generates more and it generates another six or another one for each of the initial shots that hit. It's a pretty good burst. Like it's not crazy, but it's pretty solid. The biggest issue with it is that it's in, like it's single target, just like Ningguang's burst, which means that inherently it's it becomes a lot worse in AoE than in single target. All of Tilnati's damage is single target. His Both his burst and his charge shots are basically exclusively single target. But yeah, so the, the, only, the only actual AoE part of his kit is his E and his E is a very small portion of his damage. Which means that he's effectively a lot, like, I mean, 
In terms of how he compares in single target versus in AoE, he's just like Ninglong. Effectively only single target on his normal slash charge attacks and on his burst with an E that does AoE. I think he's going to be overall better than Ninglong though. If you want AoE in Ternati teams, you're probably going to need to use him with other characters that deal AoE damage. But yeah, can deal even more damage with Dendro reactions? That's very true. Skill applies Dendro once, his charge shots apply, de apply Dendro twice each, and his burst, as far as we understand, applies Dendro four times. And he's got the broken power creep exploration talent for Sumeru. And because it's a new region, it's actually going to be useful. <laughs> oh. So now we can move on to Kole. As far as we understand, Kole has no ICD on her E. So it applies Dendro on the way out and then on the way back. Uh, they don't actually show her ascension passive. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an ascension passive, right? But one of her passives makes it so that if one of your party members has triggered burning quick and aggravate spread bloom hyper bloom bridge reactions before the floral ring returns, it grants the characters a sprout effect upon return. So basically, if you trigger a reaction while the floral ring is out, which you generally basically always will, you get one more dendro application from an, a small AoE around you. And then her burst. Uh, you can see the animation for it here. Uh, her burst is decept deceptively dog shit. Deceptively terrible. So you, you can see that it hits pretty quickly, right? So you'd expect it to apply Dendro pretty quickly, right? It doesn't. They give it a fucking special ICD where effectively she doesn't have a hit rule, which means that over the six seconds she applies Dendro two or three times. And then with the with the extension from this, you don't even gain a like it, it go it goes to three, basically. With the extension from her from her ascension passive, she applies Dendro three times with her burst. Coley's burst is deceptively terrible because it effectively only applies Dendro three times and over like the, the, the whole duration. And you'd really expect it to apply more, but it doesn't. Basically, everyone who's gonna look at her Dendro application will be incredibly fucking disappointed unless, and you can cross your fingers for this, unless they actually change it from the beta. Like we've had leagues that she only applies Dendro three times with her burst, but they could still change it. So you can cross your fingers, but honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be very hopeful. I don't, I highly doubt it's gonna happen. They are are, uh, as we'll see later, they are giving her out for free uh, in one of the 3.0 events. And I don't think they would give us a good character for free in 3.0. They want they want you to spend on the on the banner. Her dendro application gets better with constellations. You look at her C2. So her C2 ex extends the sprout duration, which basically means you get a second uh, a second dendro out from it. Like the the, the the passive damage that happens when you catch your boomerang. And then her C6 gets an additional instance of Dendro up when her E hits an enemy. So her constellations increase her Dendro application a little bit, but fuck man. Like even at C6, I don't think she's great. She's okay at C6, but I would not recommend pulling for her C6. Not like, especially considering what characters we have on the banner in 3.0. That's definitely uh, gonna be a uh, something to, 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 to stay away from if you're min-maxing. Now obviously you can always go for whatever character you want, if you like her a lot and you want to go for constellations on her because of that i'm not going to stop you just know that it's not going to be very good and don't don't expect it to be because you're going to be disappointed now they don't actually talk much about dendro traveler but in the in the previous footage we've seen we have like earlier where they where, when they show the reactions and it's okay this is this is the dendro main character's burst right this is his e and as you can see the burst deals um dendro damage at intervals Right? Effectively, the way that the, the ICD lines up for this is you'll effectively get one Dendro up every three seconds for the whole duration. Uh, with the Constellation on Dendro MC, which we'll probably get either in 3.0 or 3.1, because this is Constellation 2. Constellation 2 Dendro main character, his burst lasts for 15 seconds, which means you'll effectively get six Dendro applications. One in the beginning, and then once every, one every three seconds up to 15. So that's six, like one plus the five divi uh, 15 divided by three. So you'll get six from his uh, burst. You'll get one from his skill. You can use his skill twice, but yeah. Then this core, you can, uh, you can attack it with Pyro. If you attack it with Pyro, it's gonna explode and deal Dendro damage. You don't want to do that because it's dog shit. You're gonna attack it with Hydro. If you attack this core with Hydro, it's gonna morph into a different uh, a hydro absorbed core at which point if you attack it with pyro it's not gonna explode it's, it's locked into hydro and the hydro infused core increases the range of the burst so instead of it being like up to here it'll be like up to here and it also increases the aoe of the 
uh, of the Dendro attacks you can see here, right? It makes the AoE of those uh, larger. And then finally, the Electro Absorption. So if you attack it with Electro, it will also infuse. And it's basically just going to make it attack faster. However, because of the way that the internal cooldown lines up, you don't, you don't get more Dendro applications with an Electro Infused Burst than you do with a Hydro Infused Burst. You can basically get the same amount. So don't expect to get more applications when you hit it with Dendro. You'll still get the same amount. The um, good part about Dendro main character is that, well, they have a way to keep Dendro on the field for very long, so you don't have to swap back into them too often. Uh, they have a way to increase elemental mastery. Increases the EM of your active character by six every second up to 60, but one of the constellations makes it start at half of that. So you already use, you basically start at 30 once you have C4 and it goes up to 60. But it, go, it goes up to 60 relatively quickly. So effectively, one of his passive is that it buffs your active character's elemental mastery by about 60. And then his, ascent, his constellation 6 buffs the dendro damage and the damage type of the element that was absorbed by the core. So hydro if you absorb it with hydro or electro if you absorb it with electro uh, by 12%. Right, you get 12% damage to the corresponding element. Which means that uh, Dendro MC has an okay buff to your teammates in Dendro teams. It's nothing crazy, right? It's 60 EM and 12% damage bonus. It's just pretty meh. Well, his application is okay. Yeah, that's basically it. Like, you you, you shouldn't expect to get, like, crazy shit out of, out of Dendro uh, main character. You've got the um, Ascension passive that increases the damage of his E and Q based on his EM. Overall, you're basically just getting very... Slightly underwhelming, but for main character, surprisingly decent damage. And a, an assortment of a few minor buffs, but because you have two different ones, it's better than one, right? So effectively, right? Dendro MC is very okay. Nothing crazy, nothing terrible, just very adequate. And because Cole, in my opinion, is not very good, and because Ternati is, well, is a quick swap character that needs to be on field to apply Dendro, then I, I'm expecting Dendro MC to be probably the Dendro character you'll see you'll see used most in 3.0. And then on top of that, you can actually level Dendro Traveler right now, because I mean you have Traveler. But yeah, it doesn't it town levels don't don't carry over to different main characters. Characters, but character levels do so you can level up your character to 90 and none touches talents and uh, you'll have a level 90 dendro character on day one and then we have dory dory is incredibly underwhelming mihoyo knows what they're doing electro is already a fairly strong element and with dendro it becomes significantly better which means they have to be careful not to give electro healers too good of a kit because effectively right when you get all of your value from the element you are if you have a good elemental application and an okay kit, you're gonna be really good, right? Look at Kokomi, for example. Kokomi's damage is pretty underwhelming, but she has a fairly good AoE Hydro application and she's a healer. And that's kind of just enough to make her one of the strongest characters. She's not up there with the likes of like Kazuha and Yelan and Bennett and Singto and Sucrose, but she's definitely like one of the stronger five-star pulls because that Hydro application is so valuable. Well, with with Quicken, Electro application gains a lot of value, which means that they have to be careful not to give Electro characters too much Electro application if they're also giving them a lot of utility. And for most people, a healer is very, very valuable utility. Her E is okay. It just throws a thing, and then the thing throws things. That's cool and all. But the relevant part here is the burst, right? The burst connects to a nearby character, regenerates HP and energy. And when you have an enemy in between you and Dory, they take electro damage. Now, I'm gonna have to re enable sound for this because it's not actually staggering the enemy. Elemental energy? Wait, elemental energy? Did I read that right? You can hear the, 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 the sound effects for damage dealing. It, it's, it's doing about like. It's pretty quick. It deals damage relatively quickly, right? So you'd assume from this that she has really good electro application, but they gave her the, the Kole treatment. So Dory, just like Kole, has been given a special ICD that doesn't actually follow the same hit and time rule as other characters. And effectively, she applies electro incredibly slowly. So she doesn't apply electro nearly as quickly uh, as you'd expect if you if you think she has standard ICD. Which means that effectively her electro application is really bad, so if you try to build her for like 
aggravate damage with a bunch of EM and crit and electro damage, she's doing she ain't doing shit. But yeah, she applies very, very bad Electro, which means that she's not actually going to do a lot of damage on Aggravate teams. Uh, if you are looking for damage on Aggravate teams, uh, as far as I've seen, from what I've looked at, uh, Cookie should be a better option. While Cookie's E has a pretty dog shit ICD, it, it is standard, but it's still like, it's not great. Her Burst, that also has standard ICD, hits a lot, but it hits a lot with standard ICD, which means it applies a decent amount of Electro. You actually get five instances of Electro application when you're lower than 50% HP on, on Cookie. Anyways, her energy generation, right? We look at her E particles. That looks like two particles, right? We get two particles from this. They use it again. We get two particles again. I'm not actually sure if it's two always. It's possible it's like two or three with higher odds of getting two than three, like it is for like Bennett, for example. But yeah, it's, it's two particles, but he has a chance to generate three. But yeah, well, one of the one of the things that you should you might want to be worried about if you want to play Dory. Look at this, right? Look at how slow the animation is. Look at how it, it takes a decent amount of time to reach the enemy, which means that because it's not instant, it's probably gonna miss every once in a while. As far as we know. The initial hit does not seek out enemies. The animation time is like Diona, but it's like Diona with a, with that doesn't track enemies. Which means that you might get frustrated at missing your E. And yeah, you can always just say, wow, skill issue, just get good forehead. I, I still think it's a relevant thing to talk about how you have the possibility of missing your E. Which means you don't get the energy, which means you don't get your burst back. But yeah, so because her electro app is pretty bad, you wouldn't really play her in teams or you want good electro app. Which means you wouldn't really play her in dendro teams. She, I don't think she's actually designed to really be used in, with dendro. I think that her kit lends itself a lot better to... To different elements. I think that she's more of like a superconduct electro character than an aggravate electro character. I think she'll likely be a better choice than uh, than Cookie for Ayla. I wouldn't expect her to be very good in Taser either. Honestly, I, I don't expect her to be particularly good anywhere. It self applies electro, so you can use it to cleanse things, and you can use it with Bennett for self overload, or with Jean for AoE electro swirl around you. Flash lightning, right? Sunfire but electro. <laughs> as far as I understand, the self electro app also fucking sucks, which means that if you do use it with Jean, you'll swirl off the electro, and then you won't be applied with anything, and then you'll wait, and then it'll apply electro again, and then you'll start doing it again, and then you'll wait. Effectively, you will not have as many self electro swirls as you'd get self pyro swirls in Bennett's burst, or, or as you get self electro swirls with uh, Razor's burst, right? You, you unfortunately just don't get as many. So I don't think she'll be particularly good in teams that do that either. I'm not very optimistic. You look at her constellations. Okay, so you'll get 50% of Dory's damage. What the fuck does this mean? 50% of the damage from the connector? It's probably 50% of the of her attack, right? Character connected to the genie will obtain the following buffs. So you can give your on-field character ER if they're low HP. Sorry, if they're low energy. And healing bonus if they're low HP. This part is actually very relevant because most characters, once you swap to them, you use their burst and then you can start getting skills, which means that you use their skills with their own like particle color, uh, particle type, and you get some more energy recharge on them, which is actually somewhat valuable. It's nothing crazy, but it's, it is relevant. Uh, and then this part is weird. This makes it so that you can actually use her on field and she gets an electro infusion on her normal attacks. I am very curious about this. I will most definitely be trying Thundering Fury carry Dory on, on someone's account. It looks really funny. It doesn't look good though. Cause her normal attacks look really funny. I really like her normal attack animations. Look at, look at, look at how funny this looks. Look at it! She's using her fucking genie! <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> she's, she, she's sitting on it! I love it, man. Uh, but yeah, so this is most definitely a, um, only do this if you, if, if you just, like, for overworld stuff. But it does look really fun. Uh, then she has the same passive as Sucrose, but, well, not exactly the same, but it's, you use her the same way you use Sucrose passive to, to craft things. It's just instead of 10% chance to double, it's 25% chance to refund, uh, which is not better than Sucrose's passive, but that's okay. Okay, the weapons. What the fuck is this? Can someone make this into a fucking emote, by the way? Uh, you can look at these weapons. Why not? 
Now, obviously, these are still subject to change. Just like the um, Dory's Electro application, technically still subject to change. All of the numbers that I've showed you, shown you guys is all subject to change. So, uh, it's a 44 type five star, so it ends up with the lowest base attack out of the five stars, uh, which means that it has the highest substat you can have. And it's a crit substat, which is very, very good. If you look at aggravate units and spread units, they care about crit and damage percent a lot more than they care about either base attack or elemental mastery, which means that they like low base attack, high crit weapons. Just like units that use Bennett like low base attack, high crit weapons, because they get an, an external source of attack and they just want to multiply that with a lot of crit. But yeah, effectively it's kind of like a J cutter bow. Instead of gaining HP and gaining attack based on your HP, you just gain elemental damage bonus. And then you also get another effect that makes your charge attacks deal more damage based on your elemental mastery. You can only get it every 12 seconds. It triggers after a charge attack, so your first charge attack doesn't gain it. Effectively, this is the perfect Tilnati bow. Tilnati does not have good four star bow options. So the difference between not having the bow and having the bow will be relatively significant. But because Tilnati's overall damage, even with this, isn't that insane, I can't bring myself to recommend it for him. Uh, you can potentially go for it because it's just a good stat stick. Low base attack, high crit rate, uh, elemental damage bonus. It's a very, very versatile stat stick. It, it's in the same like realm as Aqua Simulacra in terms of like how strong it is. But yeah, it's not. It's nothing crazy, so don't, don't expect it to be crazy. It's just another good bow, basically. I think if you already have a fight, Five star bow, you shouldn't go for this. Uh, it is pretty good for Mel Ganyu, but Mel Ganyu does not get as many hits as Tilnadi does. The reason why it's really good on Tilnadi is because, well, A, Tilnadi gets a total of, what, 15 charge attack damage instances? Because he gets one from his charge attack and then four from his cluster bloom, and he gets that five times. So 14 of those hits can get the buff, which means he does get all 12 charge attack hits. His burst is a 12 second cooldown, and I think his skill as well, I'm not sure. Which means you swap into him every 12 seconds, so you get the buff every time you can. Effectively, it just it's it, it, it's very clearly designed for him. Uh, and he's gonna be a spread carry, so you're gonna build, you're gonna actually build EM on him. And he gets damage, uh, uh, one of his passives uh, converts elemental mastery to damage percent for his charge shots and his burst. So that, that's relatively valuable. Oh yeah, end of the line. This is so fucking terrible. I don't understand why, why they made this a thing. I actually am so confused. I don't think I've ever seen a weapon this terrible. This is definitely not anywhere close to the catch. This is kind of fucking useless. I mean, it's okay, but it's... Ugh. 480 motion value in physical damage, it's not great. I don't see this being better than Fading Twilight, like, ever. So if you have Fading Twilight, it's just better. And then on top of that, Favonius Bow exists, and you get Favonius Bow for free. So, like, God, this is bad. Okay, so, we got the four of these. Uh, let's start with the King Squire. Uh, low base attack, high attack percent substat. This kinda is the worst stat line you can have. If you're a character that cares about attack, you want to have high base attack, low substat, not low base attack, high substat. And then on top of that, Dendro characters don't care about attack nearly as much as EM. So obtain the teachings of the forest effect when unleashing elemental skills and burst, increasing elemental mastery by 140. This effect will be removed when switching characters. So it gives you attack, and then the passive gives you EM. That's not ideal, right? Characters that want attack and EM, right? They generally rather have crit than attack. Uh, so it's not an ideal stat line. It only, it only works for on-field characters. Deals a little bit of physical damage, but that doesn't really matter. R1, it's 60 EM. R5, it's 140. So uh, an actual like damage dealing characters that stay on field, you have Yoimiya. It's not gonna be better than Rust. I doubt it would be better than Hamayumi. You have Child. Definitely not gonna be better than V-Hunt. Could be competitive with Rust and Stringless and all the other four-star options that he has. I'd have to calc it. If it's not significantly better than Hamayumi, there's not much of a point. I mean, I might as well calc it right now, right? I have a child sheet. Oh, I have calc it already. Never mind. Okay, yeah, it's, a, it's basically very close to Hamayumi. Not really better or worse. Uh, or in other words, it functions. If you think it looks cool and you use child and national, why not, I guess? But it's definitely not something that's gonna be like, wow. Also, I'm worried. It says when unleashing elemental skills and bursts, it might trigger from your E deactivation, which would mean you get the EM when you don't want it. So I think if you, if you use this, you have to be careful not to manually deactivate your E, but to deactivate it while by, by swapping out. The wording is unclear, but I'm assuming this is an on-cast thing and not an on-damage thing, which would mean that like pressing child's E to deactivate it could activate the effect and give it to you at the wrong moment. 
Is there an another bow character? Ganyu? Probably not better than Hamayumi for Ganyu. Ga Hamayumi's really good on Mount Ganyu, but I can go Calcutta as well. I might have Calcutta already. So it is effectively just Wars in Prototype Crescent and Wars in Hamayumi. Also, this is Mel. This is not Freeze. The the I'm lying here, okay? It's the wrong title. Uh, on Ternari? I should make a Ternari weapon comparison. Okay, so I, I don't need to add Aqua because the, the, the whole point is was to judge whether or not King Squire was good on Ternari, and it's okay. I guess. But yeah, King Squire, pretty shit weapon. No real reason to ever go for it. Okay, let's get let's move on to the next one though. Fruit of fulfillment. 42 type, right? So 510 base attack, ER substat. When you turn an elemental reaction, you gain EM and lose attack up to five times. And if you don't trigger reactions, you'll start losing the stats. So this is an okay weapon. Its biggest issue is that there's not too many catalyst users that care for it. Right, you look at Yunfei. Yanfei doesn't really want an ER substat weapon. Neither does Yaimiko. Sucrose would rather just go Sack Frog. Same for Heizo. Yeah, Kogomi definitely doesn't really care for a weapon like this. Uh, Ningguang doesn't want the EM. It's not really good on Mona. Could be okay for like free to play Vape Mona, but free to play Vape Mona is not something you should do anyways. Uh, we'll come back to Lisa. Klee doesn't really want this either. And Barbara definitely doesn't want this. So it's basically just for Lisa, right? So let, let's talk about it on Lisa. If you're playing Lisa in aggregate teams, you can actually snapshot the attack. But because EM doesn't snapshot for additive reactions like aggravate, you'll basically snapshot your attack on your burst. So you won't actually lose the attack. And you'll be able to gain the EM. Which means that on Lisa specifically, the, the EM is relevant if you play her in aggravate teams. The ER is relevant because it's fucking Lisa and her energy generation is garbage. And you can actually snapshot your burst before losing attack. So in other words, uh, this is actually a very good free-to-play weapon for Lisa. Now the big issue here is you might also have other available options that are better. Witsith is very good. If you end up playing Quick Swap or on-field Lisa, uh, Solar Pearl is very good. Mappa is okay, it's not insane. Hakushin is really, really good if you don't have another character that can use it on your team. And and, so, and if you need a lot of ER, Fav Codex is gonna be better. So I do consider it to be a good free-to-play option for Lisa. And I do consider Lisa to be a character that can definitely be functional and potentially okay or even very good in aggravate teams. Um, but this is basically a Lisa-only weapon, in my opinion. Next up is Moon Piercer. After, okay, so the, the remaining uh, three weapons have basically the same uh, kind of effect, which is after triggering Burning, Quicken, Aggravate, Spread, Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Virgin. So basically, after triggering any of the Dendro reactions, a Leaf of Revival will be created. And all three of these weapons, this one is a Leaf of Consciousness, and this one is a Leaf of Consciousness, uh, all these, uh, all of these weapons generate a Leaf on the ground, and you can pick them up for stats. The Polearm generates a Leaf that you can pick up for attack percent, and the other two, you can pick it up for elemental mastery. I'm not a huge fan of the Polearm, because it is a support weapon, right? Because you don't have to pick up the leaf on the character that gets it. So then the question becomes, okay, well, how many Polarm users are gonna be caring about Elemental Mastery and off-fielders slash supports? Well, Raiden doesn't really care about EM, and also she's not really a support. Rosaria could potentially in some reverse melt teams. Shenha does not want the EM and it's not gonna be better than Fav. Toma kind of could, I guess, if you play him in Burgeon teams, but Kitane Crossspear would just be better. Uh, Hu Tao obviously wouldn't want this either. It's high base attack weapon with low substat and Hu Tao doesn't like that. Chengling, it can be okay, but catch exists, so it's really hard to justify it. Xiao doesn't want the EM, Yunjin doesn't want the EM, and Zhongli doesn't want the the EM. And also, like, Yunjin and Zhongli would rather have Fav. Also, Yunjin and Zhongli can't trigger Dendro reactions, right? There's there's also that. That's, uh, yeah. I, I don't see it being very good, because I don't think there's a lot of characters that can actually use the substat and be played in teams where the passive is relevant. Like, the only character would probably be Xiang Ling, but Xiang Ling has the catch, which means that you don't want this. Next up is the Claymore, right? So Forest Regalia, it's a Claymore with high base attack, low substat, and it has the same passive. When you trigger a Dendro reaction, you generate a Leaf, but this Leaf grants Elemental Mastery. So let's take a look at the Claymore users. Would Beto want something like this? Beto potentially would. If you want, if you need a lot of ER, you'd probably be better off with Fav. And this isn't gonna be better than um, 
Serpent's Bind, but it could be competitive with the other free-to-play options we have if you can actually make use of the ER, like in Beto's case. Because the EM buff in Beto teams where, for example, you're playing an Aggravate team with Beto, right? Beto, Fischl, Sucrose, someone else, whatever Dendro character, this EM is actually relevant. I don't think it'll be great. I think it's just okay. But yeah, like it's it's a it's a potential okay weapon on Beto. Nothing crazy, but functional. So there's it's nice, right? It's gonna be probably better than Prototype Archaic overall. Beto doesn't have a great free to play option uh, right now. She she has the fish, which is pretty okay, but not everyone has the fish. And then the other like free to play options you'll have are Prototype Archaic, which has a basically useless passive, and the uh, Katsudakiri Nagamasa, which kind of also has a useless passive because when you play Beto with Fischl, she doesn't need that much ER. She needs a bit, but she doesn't need that much. And this has lower base attack, so more ER, and the passive gives you ER. Which means that it's not nest it's not really ideal for her. So I, I would say that this is probably gonna be, if you play Beto and Dendro teams, her best craftable option. Uh, but I'd have to run calcs on that to be sure, because it's very possible in aggravate teams that you actually don't need this much ER. If you play Beto on Emblem and you have this, that's that makes your ER already 150.6, which generally is a bit more than what you need if you can perfect parry. It is generally though, like around what you'll need if you don't get perfect parries, which is, I mean, it's always more comfortable to not need to get a perfect parry. If the enemies aren't attacking, you can just use your E and swap out instead of having to wait for them to, but yeah, the, the, this i'll definitely be looking into it a bit more but i'm not too excited for it i think it's okay so other characters that could use this chongyun can't because cryo and dendro don't react uh Deluke technically could but i mean it's an er weapon and a support weapon so not a huge fan ella can't proc it noel can't proc it i mean technically they can if they're standing inside by numbers but like you're kind of pushing it at that point <laughs> razor razor could use this if you're playing physical Razor, it's not better than Archaic, but um, I do see potentially self-overload Razor in some uh, weird curry teams, which is uh, Dendro, Pyro, Electro, Hydro. Soup with Dendro instead of Animal, basically. Potentially becoming okay. Uh, and in those teams, you do want the EM, and uh, the ER isn't completely useless. Uh, I don't think it's great. I think Rain Slasher would still be better on him if you have it at that point. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a fan, but it, it's nice to know that you could potentially use it there. A Sayu could be okay on Sayu, but generally Fav would still be better. Uh, but it could definitely be okay on Sayu. And then it's not great on Shinyan. Uh, on Dory could be okay, but I'd rather I'd rather stick to Fav still. That being said, though, Fav is not a guaranteed we uh, weapon. It's very possible you don't have it. In which case, having this as a free to play option is pretty nice. And then finally, Sapwood Blade, which is exactly the same effect and stat line as the as the Claymore, but we actually have sword characters that can use this. So let, let's cover them. Albedo obviously can't. Ben Bennett is the first interesting one. So this is a uh, 565 base attack with ER substat, which means that at a baseline, this is going to be the best free to play option for Bennett. Uh, right now, the options that Bennett can go for are if he wants to go highest base attack is he can go prototype Rancor, he can go black lift longsword, or if you go for the, on the weapon banner, you can go alley flash, which has a bit more. But generally it's between Rancor and black lift. But physical damage and crit damage substats aren't ideal on Bennett. Bennett just wants ER. And because of this, then this weapon is basically just the stat line perfect for Bennett. Even if you can't use the passive, even if you don't use a Dendro character on your team, I would still say that this is now Bennett's best free-to-play option. And I would potentially even consider running it over Ali Flash because more ER is very nice to have and you don't lose that much attack. I would probably still recommend going Ali Flash, but I'd say now pulling for Ali Flash is a terrible idea because you just have this and it's not enough of an upgrade. Uh, and then if you can trigger this buff, it can actually become better than just his best option. But yeah, if you can trigger this passive, this weapon is better than Aquila. Because it's already, just from the stat line, something you'd run on Bennett. And then on top of that, you're getting at R5, 120 EM for free, which is an instructor set, and that's great. Uh, but yeah, so if you end up playing Bennett in burning teams, uh, this is gonna be very good. If you end up playing Bennett in, like, burgeon teams, this is gonna be very good. Like, actually really very good. And if you end up playing Bennett in teams that don't have Dendro, then it's still good. It's just not broken. Who else? Jean? Jean would generally still want to stick to Fav, but if you don't have Fav, this is a very good free-to-play alternative if you end up using her in Dendro teams. Uh, Kazuha, same thing. He would rather stick to Fav, but this can actually be a very solid free-to-play alternative as well. I'm not actually sure how I'd compare this to Iron Sting. Generally, 
I'd say that if you run one character that actually really wants the EM, this is probably better than Iron Sting overall, but not like significantly better. And you need to have refines on it, right? Because at refine one, the buff is 60 EM. At 60 EM, I would not run this over, over Iron Sting. At 120, I potentially would. Kea, can't trigger it. Ayaka, can't trigger it. Ayato, I mean, technically could. That would probably be okay. Okay, but I probably wouldn't recommend it overall. Good thing, uh, could actually use this. She probably just doesn't need the ER though, which kind of makes this not that great. Cookie, Cookie could use this. Generally, again, I'd probably rather stick to Fav. But if you don't have Fav, or if your Fav is busy on someone else, and let's be fucking real, your Fav is always busy on at least one person. Fav Sword is in such high demand because there's so many characters uh, for whom it's like the best four star option, sometimes even better than the five stars. Fav is in such high demand that it's actually like relatively likely that you won't have enough Favs to give a Fav to all of your characters that want Fav. Which means that having a free to play option that works, even if it's not as good as Fav, is still pretty valuable. Uh, but yeah, I, I generally wouldn't say this is better than Fav on Cookie. That being said, I could see it being pretty okay if you end up running Cookie in teams that don't need the Fav particles. I just don't really see what teams that would be. Chi Chi can't trigger this. Singto, it's okay on Singto. It's just not great. Singto deals too much damage for you to want to give him a weapon that's uh, a weapon where the main purpose of the weapon is just to give a buff to the rest of your team without giving him anything. The reason why Fav is good is because it's a big buff to him, right? It helps with his energy generation and to the rest of the team because it helps with everyone's energy generation. But you, I don't think you'd run Fav on, on Singto if it didn't help his energy generation as well. And then finally, we got the Travelers. Uh, I'll skip over Animo and Geo and Electro Traveler because honestly, people don't play them. <laughs> I mean, I guess Animo Traveler, this would be okay. Uh, Electro Traveler, this would also be okay. I just don't really see you playing those in Dendro teams. Geo Traveler can't proc it. Uh, and then Dendro Traveler, basically the same conundrum. Fav would generally be better, but if you don't have a Fav available, or if you can't afford to build enough crit rate on your character to reliably proc Fav, uh, then this weapon can also be very good. Or if you don't need the energy, which happens pretty rarely, but it does happen. So, that does it for the free-to-play weapons. Let's keep going. Okay, artifact sets. Ninja damage bonus, plus 15% on the two-piece, and then four-piece, after elemental skills or burst hit opponent, target's Ninja Res will be decreased by 30%. This effect can be triggered even if the equipping character is not on the field. So what you might not notice immediately is it's not after you deal Dendro damage. It's after elemental skills or burst hit opponent, which means you don't have to put this on a Dendro character. Ideally, you'd want to, because a character that isn't Dendro can't use Dendro damage bonus. But if, for example, your team consists of a Dendro carry that really wants to have a set that gives him damage, like the Gilded Dream set, which is this one, which we'll talk about later, then you can potentially put this on something that doesn't really do much damage on your team, like Zhongli, right? You don't have to put it on a Dendro character. So it's nice to keep in mind. Also, it can be triggered off field. It doesn't say anything about not being able to stack, so we should be... The, the, the baseline assumption is that it doesn't stack, but it can be refreshed. That, that's the baseline. Usually when it doesn't say anything in terms of refresh or, or stack, the base assumption is it cannot stack, but it can refresh. Which means as long as you're hitting at least once every eight seconds, you can have permanent uptime on this. So yeah, effectively this, kind of, this is kind of like VV for Dendro, but you don't actually need to put a specific element on your team to have this. And you can put, put this on any character on your, on your team, even the ones that, don't, that aren't Dendro which is nice. So, next up, the Gilded Dreams artifact set. Elemental Mastery plus 80. Four piece, with an eight second of trigger and an elemental reaction, the character equipping this will obtain buffs based on the elemental type of the other party members. Attack is increased by 14%, blah, blah, blah. Okay, effectively, when you trigger a reaction, you gain attack in EM. The amount of attack in EM that you gain depends on what parties, what members are in your party. If you've got a bunch of different elements in your party, you're gonna gain EM. And if you've got only the same element, you're gonna gain attack. So let's say you put this on Fischl, and you play an Agarate team with Fischl, Beto, Sucrose, Dendro MC. There's one Electro character, and there's two non-Electro character, other than your Fischl. So you'll gain the attack buff once, and the EM buff two times. So you'll gain 14% attack, and 50 times two, so 100 Elemental Mastery. This effect can be triggered once every eight seconds. The character who equips this can still trigger its effects when not on the field. So it lasts eight seconds and you can only trigger it once every eight seconds. So what this wording indicates is that you cannot refresh it. In other words, in order to trigger the set, you have to trigger a reaction, which means the first reaction you trigger doesn't benefit from the EM buff. 
Then you have the EM buffs for 8 seconds, and then after 8 seconds, the buff expires. You cannot refresh it during the duration, so after 8 seconds, your next elemental reaction also won't benefit from the EM buff. And then it'll keep going. But yeah, so effectively, right, if you apply Electro once every 5 seconds, your first Electro Op won't have the buff. 5 seconds later, your second Electro Op will have the buff, and then 5 seconds later, it's been over 8 seconds, so your third won't have the buff. And then your fourth will be 5 seconds later, it will, and it'll be yes, no, yes, no. So you only have 50% uptime on the buff. But if you apply Electro very, 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 very quickly, you apply Electro every second, your first doesn't have the buff, but then after one second, you still have the buff, so that's one. Two seconds still, three seconds still, four seconds still, five seconds still, six, seven, uh, six seconds still, seven seconds still, and then at eight seconds, it expires. So you've got seven applications, seven reactions that used the bonus and one that didn't. Which would mean that you get an uptime of, uh, what is that? 87.5%. The, the faster you apply your, your element, the better uptime you'll have on this. I, I would say, like, be a little bit careful because you're not actually gonna get the EF, the, the buff at 100% uptime. And so, and so like, th this isn't actually as much as you'll just expect. Like, you can't just look at the buff and just add them. But yeah, the uptime on this is not actually gonna be that good. So this this is a, a, a pretty a pretty good set, but just be, be careful not to forget that it's not gonna have 100% uptime. That's something to keep in mind. But yeah, it is still a, a pretty good set. Okay, this is one of the things I wanted to, to talk about. So I'll, I'll run it back and um, I'll slow it down. So I want you guys to see, right? There's no other source of dendro application. The only dendro here is the Traveler, right? So Traveler presses E, and then you swap to Barbara, right? And look at the amount of seeds that are created. We get one Bloom proc, triggers Bloom, and then another Bloom proc. And we actually get two Blooms here. So this is like basically confirmation that Hydro on Dendro works a lot like Pyro on Hydro or Cryo on Pyro in the sense that uh, one unit of Hydro onto Dendro will only remove 0.5 units of Dendro instead of one whole unit. It's a 0.5 times side in terms of uh, of aura reduction. So that's really nice. This is going to be part of like th this very simple interaction is going to be the baseline for a lot of the of the Bloom teams. Uh, but I'm really happy with it. But as you can see, right, right, you're attacking with Electro. And it's really close to the seeds, but it's not actually hitting them. So basically, some attacks will be able to trigger the seeds really easily, and some attacks won't. Generally, it's gonna depend on the AoE of your attacks. But right, Lisa, there was like right in front, and it still didn't proc. So like some, you're de you're sometimes gonna need stuff that has AoE. We'll have to do some testing to actually like figure out the consistency of proccing uh, Burgeon and Hyperbloom with different characters and different attacks. But this could make a difference in terms of in terms of Hyperbloom teams because if you have an Electro character that doesn't hit the seeds, then you can have like a second Electro character that always hits the seeds, which lets you run double Electro and make sure that one of your character is getting all the procs so you don't have to build the other one fully M. Or it could also let you run an animal character and if they're uh, triggering Swirl on an enemy that's applied with Electro, they'll have AoE Electro, which is going to crawl up the seeds. And because you want to be building full EM on your animal characters anyways, then being able to not, to, to just have them be the ones to trigger the seeds and have your Electro characters build a normal build with damage and crit might actually be pretty valuable. So this is going to require a bunch of testing to know like which characters do and which characters don't target the seeds. Okay, so this is the first banner. Uh, Tifnati with Kole. You can also go for Zhongli. Okay, so what do I think about this? My thoughts on Zhongli are like complicated. I don't like him very much. I actively enjoy the game a lot less when I use Zhongli. Unless I'm trying to do like pillar bullshit because he kind of removes the like skill expression that comes from dodging which to me makes the game very boring. And then on top of that, he's not really optimal in any of the teams I like. And then on top of that, I got his fucking C1 when I tried to get Yanfei. So I, there, there's a lot of reasons why I don't like him very much. <laughs> but he's a very healthy character for the game. Um, not everyone cares about the combat system as much as I do. And even the ones who do care, some people just don't have time to learn enemy attack patterns. Some people have actual lives outside of Genshin Impact. So having a character that kind of lets you ignore one of the one of the like axes of skill expression, it's nice to know he's there. Uh, and for, for a lot of players, it is gonna be nice to have him. 
But if, if you're looking for my thoughts on like the uh, on what I think about him, like uh, do I recommend pulling for him? In general, I don't. I'd say that he's really a character that you pull for if you don't like having to dodge. And then when it comes to Tirnati, I don't think he's all that great. He's gonna join the standard banner. I wouldn't recommend going for his banner either. You might even get him eventually by losing a 50-50 later on. I don't know. I, I, I don't really recommend him. Uh, Cole, a C0, she's not very good. With constellations, she gets a tiny bit better, but still not very good. So, I mean, if you want to play her, sure, but also not something I'd recommend. Okay, uh, Ganyu and Kokomi. So, obviously, this is a lot better. Uh, both Ganyu and Kokomi are actual, actual like, good units. Kogomi has the same, like, not exactly the same, but has a very, like, similar appeal to Zhongli in the sense that she heals a lot and she builds full HP, so she's pretty tanky. And in a bunch of the teams where you can, where you play her, she can actually be played on field. And so when you have a tanky healer on field, you don't die. But unlike Zhongli, her Hydro application, her base numbers aren't the greatest, but her base numbers coupled with her Hydro application mean that she is actually a really good unit, even outside of her uh, defensive utility. So she's definitely a character that you can consider going for. You definitely don't need her. There's a bunch of hydro options. Uh, we have Singto, who's basically the best hydro character, and which you can get on the Star Litter Shop, so you, everyone can get it for free without having to rely on RNG. And then you can go double hydro, but you don't need to. So the only like, if you have two good hydro units, you can basically build any archetypes you want. So generally it's nice to have a second good hydro unit, but you have so many choices that if you don't like Kokomi, you shouldn't go for her. You should only really go for her if like if that's the kind of kit you like. She, she's not so good that I would say go for her even if you don't like her is what I mean. And then the, the good hydro units you can go for are Kokomi, Tafkaria, I uh, Yelan, obviously Yelan probably being the best of the bunch. Mona isn't all that great, but she's still functional, so you don't... And in a few of the teams where you would use Kogami, uh, namely in freeze teams, Mona's actually pretty decent. But, uh, but yeah, she's definitely one of the good units, so if you want to go for her, uh, it's definitely definitely, definitely fair. Uh, Ganyu is also pretty good. I would argue that she's not really as valuable as Ayaka, but she's less... You know, she packs a lot of her power budget in her charge attacks, which means that if you don't want to bother learning rotations and shit, and just also for overall exploration, Ganyu is incredibly comfortable. When it comes to like, from a meta perspective, I wouldn't generally recommend Ganyu over units like Ayaka, but if you don't like Ayaka, or if you value comfort of overall exploration a lot, I would say that Ganyu is a pretty solid option to go for. Like, even though I wouldn't recommend her over Ayaka, she's still good, right? And she's still one of the better carries. I don't think I'd say one of the best because there's a lot of good carries, but she's definitely one of the good carries. So uh, yeah, if you, if you like her, feel free to go for her. Uh, I don't think any of the units in uh, in patch 3.0 are really like power level wise anywhere close to like Bennett, Sucrose, Tinto, which is the holy trinity. So if you don't have the primo gems to go for a character, or if there's a future character that interests you, don't roll. Don't put yourself in a situation where the only way to get what you want is to spend money. Unless you can afford it and you're okay with it, like obviously, right? If you want to spend money, I can't stop you, but be careful, right? You might get excited for Tefnati because he's a new element and that's exciting and it's new and it's nice. But if you've seen the, the trailers and you were like, oh my god, Sino looks so cool, I really want him. And you don't have enough Primo gems to get to pity enough times, and like with 50-50 included, right? enough times to get two characters, then if you go for Tirnari in 3.0, you might put yourself in a situation where the only way to get Sino would be to spend for Primo Gems. And well, that's something you should keep in mind. And I don't think any of the units in 3.0 are good enough that I, I, that I could say like, oh yeah, just go for them now, and if you don't have enough Primo Gems for Sino, get him when he's rerun. Like, nah. They're, they're good, they're not crazy. If you're someone who's who's likely to spend on video games, it's always better not to put yourself in a situation where the only option to get what you want is to spend. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I'll also include the, the codes in the description. Ah, never mind. I'm not gonna put the codes in the description. By the time this video is out, the codes are gone.